Hey guys, I'm filming this way too late and I woke up Phoebe. So now as a reward, she's going to stay here with me on my lap. She's usually not allowed because then she interrupts, but here's her sleepy head. I have a quick update about Michaela Nogueira. There's this brand of fake tan on TikTok called Illusion Bronze and um, it's owned by a guy called Matthew and he actually worked with Trisha Paytas on um, raising some money. Um, he was originally raising money as like a joke for her because she wanted some boots um, and then she was like, no, I can afford the boots. Let's just donate the money. And they did like this great thing. He was on her podcast. Seems like a very great guy. His bronzer is a fake tan essentially that is customized for your skin tone, hair tone, and eye color so that it's not just like a generic orange that some fake tans are. So you put on the website like, oh, I have, for example, me, pale skin, blue eyes, blonde hair, and they'll mix up a, a tan. They have, I think they have like 120 different variations that you can come up with, um, which is obviously incredible. I think it goes into like your undertone and stuff. So. I mean, I definitely want to try it after this whole drama. And he's been obviously sending out the PR to people and everyone seems to be loving it. He sent his fake tan to Michaela, and she was obviously either going to do a video with it or not. What ended up happening was another massive brand. He doesn't name them, but they're apparently like one of the kind of big fake tan brands that kind of everyone knows. They copied his idea. They already had like a fake tan that like in different shades and they have four variations but they would basically pretend that their fake tan kind of works the same as his where you can kind of customize it, but really they just have some pre-made options and they'll just offer you a different one. But whereas his is like mixed for your skin tone, hair tone and eye color. And then they started sending out these fake tans to a bunch of the big influencers and paying them to do a good review, um, I guess to push his fake tan lower in the, you know, scales. So he reached out to Michaela and he was like, cause she did a sponsorship with that brand. He claims it's a sponsorship, so I wonder if she put paid ad on it or not. Uh, but we can kind of look back and you know find out what fake tan brand that was. Um, but he essentially said like, it sucks to see an influencer take money for promoting a brand that is directly stealing from me. Um, like the idea, the concept, but doing it way worse. But then they just have more of a budget to be able to pay people to push his brand lower down on the scales, right? So she reaches back out and she's like, send me your products, like I'll find them in my house, but if not, could you send me some more? And I'm gonna do a positive brand deal for your brand. He sends her the product and then there is a three to four month back and forth where she keeps on saying, oh, I'll do the brand deal tomorrow. I'll do the post tomorrow. I'll do the post tomorrow. It's not even a brand deal. He's not paying her, but she was like, I'll be goodness for my heart because I promoted this other brand who stole from you. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. She kept on saying, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, eventually everyone was literally like all of his fans were commenting under his po under her post being like, when are you going to do the brand deal? And it got to the point, I keep on calling it a brand deal, a review. It got to the point where she started um, replying in a really mean way to his fans and blocking them. So someone would be like, are you going to review Illusion Bronze? And she would go, no, or shut up or block them. So at that point, he got kind of frustrated and posted a bit of a expose uh, where he goes over kind of the backstory, like I just said, you know, with the brand copying them and how kind of that all leads up to the current drama. Michaela's lies have cost me $10,000. Yes, I am $10,000 in debt because of her lies. In October, I made a video asking Michaela if there was any way she would review my small business. My business Illusion Bronze went viral last year and in the video to Michaela, I just explained, hey, there's this multi-million dollar company who's sort of knocking off my idea and I could really use your help. If you don't know, Illusion Bronze is the only custom self-tanner mixed for each individual client based off your eye color, hair color, and skin tone. I launched in January. This multi-million dollar brand had a line of four shades coming out in April. After seeing I had gone viral with my concept, this brand put a quiz on their website asking people for their eye color, hair color, and skin tone, and they would suggest one of four colors. So it basically cheapened and simplified my idea, obviously, because I have 125 customizable colors. I tried to convince myself that it was a coincidence, but there were a few girls who went viral from reviewing my product that were genuine, authentic reviews. And this multi-million dollar brand went after them, paying them to do reviews of their brand and mention the things that were unique about my product, but instead say it about theirs. So imagine my surprise when four days after I asked Michaela if she would review my small business, she reviews the specific line from the multi-million dollar company who was knocking me off.
Now keep in mind, when I asked her to review my product line and then she reviewed the competitor four days later, their line had been out for six months at this time. So I didn't believe it to be a coincidence. It's not that I was blaming her. I didn't think it was her fault. But I thought, wow, this company has already gone after the small influencers who blew up my brand and paid them. They must have seen my video to Michaela and now paid her too. This video I posted, wondering if it was a coincidence, garnered 4 million views. Then he goes over some messages between him and Michaela about kind of the timeline of when he's gonna, you know, get her to post the review. Um, she, you know, gives a final, like, I'm gonna post it tomorrow. And he then actually discusses the fact that in the past, Michaela said that she doesn't do a lot of indie brands anymore because a lot of the times they're not able to sustain the kind of demand and provide the quality, quantity and the quality for that demand. So then they end up like outselling and it's very difficult for them to restock because they're a small brand and they don't have the budget for it. So he essentially got a loan from, I believe it was Shopify for $10,000 to buy new product so that when she posts the review, he's able to do the provide for the, you know, demand. Kayla DM'd me the next morning and said, it was an absolute coincidence. It would never be my intention to hurt a small business. She said, I think I actually have your tanner. Regardless, when I get home, I will make my purchase and try your tanner ASAP. We DM back and forth for a while. She does say, I wish you would have come to me first. I was like, uh, how? So then she gave me her phone number, asked to speak on the phone. We talked for like 20 minutes. She was like, my parents are small business owners. They've experienced similar things. It's like, wow, this poor girl, like she's young. She's doing the best she can. Once she's home, she shows me that she has the product as well as shits all over my competitor, but I'm not gonna blast that. And for a second, I really thought like, wow, maybe this misunderstanding is turning into a friendship. Well, in October, she told me she was posting it ASAP and then two months passed by. I really just had grieved the idea and moved forward. I was like, damn, it's unfortunate that she really is the person that people say she is. I don't think that she understands that just because I don't have 15 million followers, I do have almost 72,000. And people tag her in my videos and ask me about her every single day now for the past three months. So one day when someone was in my live asking me where Michaela's review was, I said, guys, just let it go. And then people started going to her page and commenting, where's the Illusion Bronze review? Michaela texted me almost immediately. I don't know if you mentioned me or something somewhere, but I'm getting so many comments about trying the tanner and I'm actually using it this weekend. She says, I'll be posting a video about it tomorrow, December 7th. Now in the past, Michaela made a video about how she doesn't review indie brands anymore because they can't keep up with the orders. There's been a few instances where the indie brand cannot handle the, the capacity to fulfill all of those orders. I was a long-term fan and follower, so I remembered that video. And the last thing that I wanted to do was embarrass myself, my business, or her. And Shopify had kept offering me a $10,000 loan. So when she told me, I'm reviewing this tomorrow, I was like, let me take that loan. The money gets deposited within like 24 hours. And I spent all $10,000 on product. I honestly felt like that day was Christmas. I was so excited. I kept refreshing my TikTok feed. And when she finally posted, she clearly had a tan on, but it was hideous. Talking like beyond orange and the hands were a mess. I genuinely didn't understand with how my product line works, how she could turn out looking like that. Still, I tried to find the least offensive photo of this tan I could find and texted her, you look beautiful. Here is my message below. I say I wish I could have given her tips and talked to her more about how long to leave it on for. When she and I were on the phone, Michaela wanted to make sure that my tan was a rapid tan, which it is. You leave it on one hour for light, two hours for medium, three hours for dark. She told me she doesn't like using tans that you leave on for a long time but she told me she left on mine for 12 hours. So I'm like, is that why it turned out so bad? Still, she tells me she loves it. She then doesn't post it. Um, and then what she does post is what he claims to be a, a spray tan because it looks really orange and patchy. And to me, that didn't really look good, but she didn't even promote the self tan. She was just 
wearing it, but he claims it's a spray tan because he used to do spray tan, so he kind of knows what it looks like. If you're unaware of this, Michaela usually posts in chronological order, so I'm like, if this is my tan, why didn't she post a review video? She said she was posting it today. I called my mom so upset. I'm like, mom, when she posts this video, no one is gonna wanna buy myself tan, or like, how did it turn out this way? And then my mom said, Matt, with all the orders you've had, has anybody ever told you they look orange? Have you ever seen a photo of someone who looks orange after using Illusion Bronze? And I was like, no. And then I went back and I looked at her full body and I realized she got a spray tan. Not only did she lie when she said she was posting a review the next day, but she lied to me pretending she even used it at all. Like, why not just say I didn't get a chance to use it? Why are you saying I slept in it and I love it? Just say you didn't have time. So for the next three weeks, I'm stewing. I'm like, where's the review? $10,000 worth of products showed up at my house. Finally, I'm like, listen, she doesn't know how much money I spent, so let me just tell her the situation and that it's stressing me out, and I know she'll make it right. Pause if you want to read, but basically I tell her three weeks earlier, I placed an order for $10,000 because I wanted to be prepared. And as someone who talks about their mental health so much, I wanted to let her know that I was really stressed out about this, and if she could find the energy to do a New Year's Eve tan, I would really appreciate it. Oh my God, well, the good news is you'll have the stock when the video is posted. She told me she didn't have time to make a review when she originally used the product, even though I now know she didn't use the product at all. Well, she did find the time to do a New Year's Eve tan. Now I'm going to do my base. I am going to match myself tan. But for some reason, she chose not to review mine in that moment, even knowing there was $10,000 worth of product sitting in my home. Now it's the second week of January, two weeks since I've told her about this, and she's gotten another spray tan. So she said she was posting it ASAP in October. The first week of December, she said, I'm posting the review tomorrow. Two weeks ago, I told her because she said that I ordered $10,000 worth of product and she's had two tans since then, and not once did it cross her mind, hey, I really should post that review. This guy has all this product sitting in his house because of what I said to him. She doesn't care about me, my mental health, my finances, my stress, but she expects everyone else to care about her mental health. You're not the only one, babe. You're not the only one. I'm telling you guys this now because last night people were commenting on her videos saying, I support Matthew's small business, review Illusion Bronze. She responded, no. She responded, shut up. And she started blocking people. I've got 10K worth of product in my home. So if you'd like to start out your new year with the only custom tan, please visit Illusion Bronze. And if you're not somebody who uses self tanner or can't afford it, please follow me. That's the biggest thing that you can do to help. I want to make sure that I am doing what I can to highlight small businesses this year for no compensation. We need to be helping each other in 2024, not just ourselves. And then he's basically just disappointed, you know, that he would get a loan for $10,000 because she kept on saying that, yeah, I'll make things right. You know, I get that I promoted this company who's stealing from you, but I'll, I'll make it right. And she kept on stringing him along for months and months to then not do it at all. She then posts a response where she essentially says that she, there was miscommunication essentially, that she wasn't wearing a spray tan, that she was wearing his fake tan, but because of the color, like correcting color grading that she uses on TikTok, it looked really orange and that she's wearing it now and it doesn't look orange and that he shouldn't rely on her for his business success. I really like Matthew. Matthew's a really nice guy. I've had good conversations with him. But I find it really unfortunate that he decided to take this issue to TikTok and fabricate a lie in order to prove a point. Am I entirely wrong that I didn't review the Tana when I said I would? Yes. Did I mention to him that I didn't get to it? Yes. But still, nonetheless, I should have reviewed the Tana sooner. But to fabricate a lie that when I told him I used his Tana, he says I lied to him and used a spray tan. I've never gotten a spray tan in my life. I, I'd like to brief with that. Second of all, the reason that the tan appeared orange is the same reason I look kind of like really warm and orangey right now. The video has color grading on it. So if I take the color grading off of my video, let me show you what I look like. And this was just in a video of me showing my outfit. So if I did a video using the tan, it wouldn't have color grading on it, but it was just a random video. So let me take the color grading off and show you what I actually look like. This is with the color grading off. Totally different. And yes, I have this tan on and I'm not orange at all. And I've never gotten a spray tan and I didn't lie. Again, I am completely in the wrong because I should not have told Matthew, oh, I'll do it tomorrow when 
I went tomorrow came and I couldn't do it. And I did tell him, I did tell him I wasn't able to get to it because I was in a rush, but I was going to get to it. I always get to it. It just sometimes takes a bit. Anyways, he messages me again around, you know, New Year's and lets me know that he had purchased 10,000 units or $10,000 worth of Tana, which I did not advise him to do that. That is a business decision that he made. Fact of the matter is I didn't get to it yet. That's it. I, if you look at my track record of Tana videos, the, t making a Tana video is different than me sitting at my beauty desk. I do them like once or twice a year and I don't tan often at all. Last year I tanned maybe three, four times. So I know that like four months has gone by since I said I would do the review, but I just don't tan a lot and I don't make tanning videos a lot. He cannot rely on me for the success of his brand. He just can't. I just, I don't know what to do in this situation, but I am sorry. And it's like he wasn't relying on her. He was pointing out the fact that she promoted a competitor who was stealing his idea and she got, took money for that. She got paid for that. So then she offered to make it right. And she kept on stringing him along for three plus months to then not post the review. Like if she hadn't strung him along, he wouldn't have gotten that 10,000 loan because he wanted to be able to actually deal with the demand because he knows that whatever Michaela promotes will sell out. But she didn't have to stream along. If she just said, no, sorry, I'm not going to review this or I'll review this in my own time, he wouldn't have been so pushy. But she kept on giving him these fake, you know, like these fake, what's it called? It's way too late. I'm filming at almost midnight. These fake like, oh yeah, I'll post tomorrow, I'll post tomorrow. She didn't have to string him along, but she did that to get him off her, off her ass, essentially. And to which he actually posts about some of the receipts that he has against her. He kind of goes over once again the messages. He goes over the, what looks like a spray tan or just like a really bad tan. He also goes over the fact that she's, she claims she doesn't fake tan a lot, but she's constantly fake tan. And she's constantly matching her foundation to her fake tan because she claims that she couldn't have done it because she doesn't fake tan a lot. She only fake tans like twice a year or something, uh, but she's constantly fake tanned. So it's like, why are we la like the thing is at this point we should all know and realize that she is a little bit allegedly of a liar so that's how you know i'm telling the truth i have your perfect formula receipts proof timeline screenshots in everything to and he basically just rebuttals everything she said michaela just posted a response to my tiktok i want to be very clear about why i made the decision to post that video the day before yesterday, my followers were commenting on one of Michaela's videos about her reviewing Illusion Bronze. And Michaela made the decision to respond to them and say things like no and shut up and proceeded to block a lot of people that are following me. That really triggered me because two weeks ago was when I told Michaela that I had spent $10,000 on product. No, Michaela did not tell me to spend $10,000 on product, but her knowing that I had just spent all that money on product, why is she responding to people in her comment section saying things like no and shut up and blocking them? So Michaela, that is why I posted that video. If Michaela is saying that she didn't get a spray tan, I'm not gonna double down. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I apologize for that. See, I've been airbrush tanning people for half of my life. And there's something called either a heavy hand or a light hand when you're airbrushing. And when somebody has a heavy hand, it's usually a bad spray tan or somebody inexperienced. They'll start out on one part of the arm, the higher part light, and then it gets really heavy as they pull down. And as somebody who's spray tanned a lot of people, that's what it appeared like to me. But like she said, that's not true. I just want to clarify again, when she told me she was posting it tomorrow, she did not the next day tell me, oh, I'm so sorry, I was so busy, I didn't get to it. She didn't tell me that until three weeks later when I contacted her and said, hey, you said you were posting this the next day, I bought all this product, then she said, oh, I'm sorry, I was too busy, I didn't get to it. Michaela did not advise me to do that and I 100% did that on my own and here is why. I used to review indie brands all the time. When I was making those indie brand review videos, you know, 90 to 100% of the time, the product would sell out. Um, there's been a few instances where the indie brand cannot handle the, the capacity to fulfill 
all of those orders. There have been cases where I sold out a product and the brand got greedy and put the product back in stock, but it wasn't back in stock and people ordered it and then waited months to receive it because this indie brand was dishonest, had people buying a product that wasn't even in stock. Does that video explain to you guys at all when she texted me on her own, out of the blue, hey, I'm posting a review tomorrow that I would go and purchase a lot of product? Fact of the matter is, I didn't get to it yet. That's it. This final part of the video is the only part that really pissed me off. I will say almost no one in my comment section was defending Michaela, but the two or three people said the exact same thing, which she regurgitated. He can't rely on her for the success of his business. He cannot rely on me for the success of his brand. He just can't. I just, I don't know what to do in this situation, but I am sorry. My business did very well last year, long before Michaela. I was not relying on her for the sole success of my business that I've worked on for six or seven years. This is just about when you say you're gonna do something, just do it. I think it's called integrity. And now there are mixed reactions. So on her original video, the comments say, literally just watch Matthew's video. Not me seeing this immediately after Matthew's video. Girl, four months, not one day. Um, you're not wrong, but doing what you say and keep your word speaks volumes about your integrity. That's key. I understand, but four months, I don't know whose side I'm on. No contract equals no pressure. Now people are saying like, because you didn't sign a contract, you can't demand, you know, X, Y, and Z, but integrity as a good person would indicate one, to not string someone along, not make fake promises, and also just kind of help out a business who you helped to try to destroy. She taking on a brand deal from a company who was stealing his idea and obviously had more of a budget to do so. I mean, it's kind of up to her to kind of make that right if she's a good person, but we know that that's not really the case. Someone said, but how did you have time to review the competitor? I'm just confused. You know, she claims she didn't have time to review his product because she only faked tans like twice a year, but she somehow managed to fit that fake tan that was bear right a paid sponsorship. She managed to fit that one in. That one she had time for. Why? Because Michaela is money hungry. She's a money hungry person. She doesn't care about integrity. She doesn't care about helping a small brand. She doesn't care about helping an indie brand. She just cares about money. And in my opinion, you know, when she said, oh, I don't do indie brand sponsorships because they're not able to keep up with the demand and blah, blah, blah. I think it's because they don't have the budget to pay you your six figures. Cause you know, recently she claimed that Morphe were gonna pay her six figures when she was gonna do a collaboration with them, but then she declined it. They're, the downfall of Morphe is the craziest to me. I don't use Morphe products like ever. I'm gonna use this 35C Everyday Chic Palette. I do still have like every single Morphe palette because it's nostalgic. I'm gonna put a little bit of eye base. You wanna hear some tea? In my first year doing this as a career, so three, four years ago, I was in talks with Morphe about doing Morphe x Michaela. And this was like a huge deal, like big six figure offer. Like my, I would be in Morphe stores across the world. My face on billboards in New York City was the biggest offer I had seen so far in my career at that point. Anyways, I said no. Cause I knew in my head and in my hat that that was not the path for me. I, I just, I had a gut feeling not to do it. It's crazy to think about because now no one gives a shit about Morphe. <laughs> the amount of tea I have about my career, oh, I could write a novel. This is looking pretty. I'm trying to match my sweater. You know how I do it. I do kind of wonder how and if my life would be different if I did the Morphe collab. And uh, that is not the only collab I've turned down, by the way. There's many. You have to have a lot of money to be able to decline six figures, but also, these indie brands don't have six figures to pay you. His product is amazing. This response is a miss. Um, it's been months. I'll do it tomorrow for four months. A simple, I'll review it when I get around to it. I don't wear tan as often. Would have been fine. That's what I just said. Matthew's response is on point. Don't make promises you don't intend to keep. But then someone did say, I'm so confused why anyone would base a 10,000 business decision off a verbal agreement. He cannot rely on me is really <laughs> the takeaway from this. For his response, people said no, because imagine if he didn't order that many units and she had posted the review, she'd be like, as a business, he should have been prepared, which is like a lose-lose situation for him. You know, you just can't win in this situation. Um, someone said 100% on your side, she should have never strung you along like that. I will support you any way possible. I mean, I, from this whole thing, even though she didn't post a review, she still, you know, tagged him and brought attention to him, whether positive or negative. In fact, that's still going to go a long way for him, hopefully. And he does have the product that he bought. So at this point, you know, the attention is attention. Any attention is good attention. And I'm honestly so tempted to try it. Like at this point, I feel like this is 
opened my eyes once again. I feel like she didn't do a review. And the, the thing is, if she had done a review, I actually wouldn't have trusted it because I don't trust her reviews. But now that she like hasn't done the review and they're beefing, I feel like I'm just gonna go buy myself some Illusion Bronze. Um, if you guys have tried it, let me know what you think about it. And yeah, that's kind of it. Subscribe to the bell icon for engagement and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.